was at 40% humidity, something uh, to tell there, Tom. More on VMDT. I've purchased the review unit, so I've been able to make a few modifications. Builders of the MDT might find them useful. And later on, you'll hear how another MDT sounds as received on this MDT unit. The first change I suggest is put on a bigger tuning knob. The existing one is quite small, and tuning from 7050 to 7110 in its lower frequency range is quite awkward to tune stations in. The rim of the large tuning knob covers the part of the front panel intended for the dial scale. That can be overcome in several ways. You can have the frequency scale on the skirt of the knob, ideal if you're using one of those smooth aluminium knobs. Another thing you can do is make up a tuning scale showing frequency versus the setting of the knob using o'clock positions. Here's a hint. If you're trying to tune in lower sideband signals with the direct conversion receiver and you're not used to doing it, it's easier to tune from higher frequencies down the band. That means the first signal you hear is the correct sideband. Otherwise, if you tune from the bottom up, you have to tune through the unintelligible side of the signal and then through the suppressed carrier until you've got it right. Number two. One thing about the MDT is that though there are two frequency ranges, they were selectable inside and not from the front panel. To make both band segments selectable from the front panel, all you need to do is put a toggle switch right here. Having the switch open means only one varactor diode in the circuit and therefore the higher frequency range. Bridging them gives you the two varactor diodes, meaning it covers the lower segment. Fortunately, the connections for the tuning range are located right behind the front panel, between the microphone socket and the tuning control. A switch in this position doesn't get in the way, nor obscure any lettering. With that switch, you can have both frequency ranges, which greatly increases your chance of making contacts, as there's more stations to call. When you do the two range mod, you'll notice that the ranges are overlapping. 7050 to 7110 and 7090 to 7130. More tuning range makes tuning harder and an overlap is unnecessary. So I suggest having the overlap of maybe 3 or 4 kilohertz only. You can do that by changing some of the component values. I changed the value of C5 slightly. Instead of 56 picofarad, I made it 44 picofarad. That's not a standard value, but I got it by putting two lots of 22 picofarad capacitors in parallel. I mounted both of those on the underside of the circuit board. Having a lower capacitance meant I could get the resonator to operate at a slightly higher frequency, i.e. nearer to 7140 than 7130. Having that extra top end was good, but it also meant that some coverage was sacrificed at the bottom end. Since there's overlap that we want to get rid of, we want to cut the bottom tuning range so it finished at say 7090 instead of 7110. To do that, we added some extra capacitance. From this point, which is also in common with the range switch, to this point. I used 33 picofarad. C3 isn't used in the MDT, although there's provision for it on the board. Luckily, its pad was handy to connect this extra capacitor from this point to this point. I used 33 picofarad and again put it on the underside of the circuit board. An unforeseen benefit of doing the capacitor mod is that the tuning scale is almost completely linear and that's on both the higher and lower ranges. A linear scale is beneficial because it means that tuning is easy over the whole range and you don't have a lot of frequencies crammed at one end.
You might need to experiment with values, but this lookup table shows the two ranges I got. 7050 up to a bit above 7090 on the bottom range, and on the top range, a bit under 7090 to a bit above 7130. In fact, it goes up to nearly 7140. That gives you a little bit more tuning range than standard. They're selectable from the front panel, and they don't overlap, making tuning easier. There's nothing worse than getting to a portable operating site and leaving your headphones at home. Well, that can be a thing of the past with the MDT, because if you're using a dynamic microphone, such as a rocking armature from a telephone earpiece, or even some old CB microphones, then you can have that microphone operate as a speaker as well. The mod requires just one resistor, 680 ohm. You connect it between the speaker connection and the microphone. The full use of the headphone socket is unaffected by this mod. It's a lot quieter because of a Series 680 ohm resistor, but still quite adequate, especially if you hold it up to your ear. I've done the mod and it doesn't seem to affect the transmit audio, so I'd highly recommend it. Oh, sorry, uh...